Thanks for watching County Report this week. I'm Susan Kennedy. We start this time with a substantial expansion underway in Germantown. Kyogen has started work on its $52 million headquarters. The building will bring together employees who are currently spread out all over the state. And is projected to yield 17.5 million square feet of commercial space, 9,000 housing units, and a cluster of over 50,000 jobs. Now, Kaizen expansion demonstrates how our talented workforce, proximity to major life science uh, clients and partners, and private public development initiatives can also be a catalyst for economic growth locally. The biotech company has grown considerably over the past few years and now employs almost 700 people in the state of Maryland. Kyogen's revenues top $1 billion a year, and the company anticipates additional expansion in the future. When I joined the company, I've been here for five years. Uh, we had a little over 1,000 employees, and now we have uh, about 3,500 employees worldwide. Uh, we have now almost 700 employees here in uh, the state of Maryland and about 1,200 employees in the United States. So that represents dramatic growth uh, for the company. We've more than doubled in revenue. We've more than doubled in employees over that five years. It's been a, a great uh, road forward, and we're really looking forward to continued growth. We want you to know that you are exactly the kind of business, you're creating exactly the kind of jobs, and you're creating exactly the kind of economic development environment that we're working to support. So it's terrific to be here to celebrate today with you, uh, and please accept the full appreciation of the Montgomery County Council. Development districts are special taxing districts created to fund infrastructure in new communities beyond what a developer would normally provide. The proposed development district for Clarksburg has not yet been implemented and a new measure proposed at the council seeks to do away with the plan. We know how we'd want to implement a development district. We know how to use impact taxes better or impact fees better. And so now we're at a time to say kind of holistically, how do we do funding of infrastructure for a community? Well, if we know we've got something that's a problem that's out there as we do in Clarksburg, let's just get rid of it. We haven't actually implemented it yet, so let's say we're not going to, and let's do Clarksburg from with a fresh perspective, knowing what we know now and knowing the things we're going to try and do countywide so we can have a much more comprehensive and consistent approach. And the thing that didn't happen the first time was that the community really wasn't a part of the conversation. So let's engage the community in the dialogue now so we have a kind of an effective and equitable distribution for what the community thinks they want to have funded. Well, it looks like the referendum regarding the ambulance fee will be on the November ballot after all. The decision overturns a ruling by county election officials and a judge blocking the referendum because of the way people signed. More than 52,000 people signed the petition, but thousands were thrown out because of illegibility or because they did not match state records. County Executive Ike Leggett is poised to send the council $14 million in budget cuts if the fees are thrown out in November's referendum. Because we have a potential gap, and I'd already included within the budget itself approximately $14 million in anticipation of this, plus over the next few years, going as well, well fair out as 10 years, that we would have this fee, I have to now take appropriate actions to remove that potential income and make the cuts or adjustments. Ultimately, we only have one of three choices here. We can raise revenue, meaning increase taxes to make up the difference, which I'm not going to do. Uh, we can cut or uh, we can, in fact, have the ambulance fee billed against the insurance company. My choice of those three would be to build it against the insurance company. A grassroots effort is underway to improve the quality of life for some of Montgomery County's oldest residents. This blueprint has just been released to give neighborhood groups strategies to create senior villages. Neighbors in Bannockburn, Chevy Chase, Burning Tree, Cabin John, and Somerset have all created senior villages. Some of what they've learned in the process has become the focus of the book. I know we've had lots of meetings up till now, but this is a good first step in compiling the knowledge that you all have developed. And this by no means is a static document. I hope that it will continue to be added on to with your expertise so that communities that come later uh, can have a shorter process and a more focused uh, process at the start. 
County Executive Ike Leggett was on hand for the release of the blueprint. He joked that now more than ever, he's paying attention to the needs of seniors. When I started my administration four years ago, uh, I constantly refer to the seniors of Montgomery County. Uh, as of July the 25th of uh, this year, I now say we seniors of Montgomery County. <laughs> <Welcome. laughs> Council staff has been working with the state on three sets of designs that pertain to the Purple Line as it relates to downtown Bethesda. As council members tell us, plans include a new entrance to the station that is being funded by the county. This will, of course, serve the Purple Line. It's actually the western end of the Purple Line, but it's also going to make access to Metro much more convenient for our busiest central business district in Montgomery County, the Bethesda Central Business District. So it's going to be located on Elm Street right at Wisconsin Avenue, and there will be two levels. The first level will be access to the Purple Line, and then the lower level will be access to Metro. It will be open and available for commuters in 2016 if all goes well, and that's the same year that we'll actually be able to ride the Purple Line if all goes well. Though experts say the recession is over, here in Montgomery County, times are still tough. Council members have received an update on the latest economic indicators and the county's fiscal plan. Next year, the county's major commitments are expected to grow by just over 4 percent. However, the current fiscal plan cannot support that growth. There should be no surprises. That's why we adopted a longer-term fiscal plan this year. I feel really good about that because we've, 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 um, we've been, I've been, you know, working with the agencies and the uh, county uh, employee reps um, since we put, passed the budget to say, look, uh, we don't see any additional revenue. We're going to have to plan accordingly. Uh, expectations are going to have to change. Uh, we cannot assume uh, things that we were used to, that we used to be able to assume easily. So, you know, again, um, employee bargaining is is clearly going to occur, and this time it's going to have some real context. Coming up on County Report this week. We'll talk with Captain Paul Starks from Montgomery County Police about a recent robbery in the county. I'm Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer. Now it's really time to put the phone down while driving in Maryland. We'll tell you about a new law taking effect when County Report this week continues. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? Now there is only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls. 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's new online and telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Remember, call 311 to get it done. GED diploma, the barriers in your life fall. Take the first step and get free GED information in your area at 1-877-38-YOUR-GED or yourged.org. Earn your GED diploma and begin your brighter future. If you love to ride, then listen up. It's your man Big Ticket with a message for all my riders. Rider error is the number one cause of motorcycle crashes. So when you roll out, Take control of your ride and lead by example. Ride like you're invisible. Drivers don't always look for riders, so expect the unexpected. Control your speed. It can be a thrill, but speed the number one killer of riders. Ride smart. Ride safe. And remember, our reputation is riding with you.
Hello, I'm Eric Friedman, the Director of the Office of Consumer Protection here in Montgomery County. I'm also the host of Consumer Compass, a show that investigates consumer fraud issues such as home improvement scams, credit card theft, and pyramid schemes. You can catch us these days and times. Welcome back. We're joined now by Captain Paul Starks from Montgomery County Police, who's here with some information on a recent robbery that took place in Burtonsville. Paul, what can you tell us? Well, Susan, on Saturday, September 25th at about 9.41 a.m., the SunTrust Bank in Burtonsville, located at 3901 National Drive, was robbed by a black male with a handgun. Preliminary investigation revealed that the suspect entered the bank, approached the teller, displayed his weapon and demanded cash. Once he received cash, he fled the scene. Again, he's described as a black male wearing a black hooded sweatshirt, gray sweater, black pants, and black shoes. He also had a black bandana covering his face at the time of the robbery. Okay, what should folks do if they have any information on this case? They can call our major crimes division to speak with a robbery detective. This case also is a crime solver's case in Montgomery County, and they're offering up to $1,000 for information leading to the arrest of this suspect. Okay, thank you very much, Captain Paul Starks, Montgomery County Police. You might be surprised to learn that 60% of the families getting help from the Mana Food Bank have at least one person working, and half of the people getting food from there are children. As Elisa Parenti reports, MANA is ramping up its efforts to meet that growing need. The job seems overwhelming. Volunteers assemble more than 200 boxes for families to pick up every single weekday. And each of those families getting this food can only come once a month. When you do the math, you figure MANA is providing food to almost 4,000 families in Montgomery County every single month. And as staggering as those numbers are, they are still on the rise. The picture of need really has changed in our community since the recession hit. I think the thing that strikes me most is when I meet a family that's now in line here waiting to get food, um, and they tell me, you know, two years ago they were on the other side of the line. They were the ones donating food or writing a check to help support the work here at the food bank. Last year, MANA fed 150,000 people, and half of them were children. The nonprofit survives on the contributions of volunteers and partnerships with farmers and grocery stores. One of the ways MANA has been able to meet that rising need is by sending out trucks to 40 different grocery stores in the area and picking up what it calls rescue food, items that are approaching their sell-by date. It may look like quite a bit is collected, but the reality is they still need help from the community. The reality is our canned food supply is low and we need the community to be responsive and, and help us keep the shelves stocked. Regular volunteers like Keith Feeney are helping MANA to expand their offerings to include a new monthly Saturday food distribution day. It's good for the community, it makes you feel good yourself, and it's, it's an absolute need that uh, you know, we, should, uh, we should take care of. And that's what they're doing, one handful, one box at a time providing more than three million pounds of food to those in need. I'm Elisa Parenti for County Report This Week. For more information on what you can do to help, go to the website on your screen, manafoodoneword.org. Maryland's latest cell phone law is set to take effect October 1st. It's already illegal to text while driving. Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer has more on what this new law entails. Bridget? That's right, Susan. We've all done it, driving while holding a cell phone. It's dangerous, and now it's against the law. We had the chance to catch up with Chief of Police Terry Treshick to find out more about what you need to know on the road. It's time to put down the cell phone while driving. Rockville Chief of Police Terry Treshick and his officers have seen too many incidents of distracted driving involving a cell phone. The texting, the actual phone itself, trying to dial a phone while you're driving, talking on a phone, being distracted, not keeping your eyes on the road, it's, it's becoming a much more common occurrence, and frankly, it's, it's causing more accidents out there. First texting was banned, but now even using a cell phone can be a violation. I think a very important law that's coming into effect on October 1st is the new one about handheld telephones, the portable cell phone. 
and the inability, the prohibition against using the cell phone while driving. It's, it's really a law to uh, go against distracted driving, and it, it's in concert with the texting law that's been in effect since October 1 of 2009. Under the new law, a driver caught using a handheld phone is subject to a $40 fine for the first offense and a $100 fine for subsequent offenses. Using a handheld phone while driving is a secondary offense in Maryland, meaning it can't be the only reason a police officer makes a traffic stop. There would have to be a primary cause for making the stop, such as speeding or failure to stop at a traffic signal. And what about those hands-free devices? Well, I think hands-free devices are out there. The Bluetooth and, and a lot of cars are coming with the, with the total hands-free. It's better than having the phone up to your ear, but frankly, it's a distraction to you. you know, police officers have to listen to radios, and we listen to the public. We listen to uh, uh, th the calls coming in, and we find it distracting. So you have to be trained very, very hard, and you have to be aware of your surroundings. So hands-free is better than having it up to your ear, but the best is not using it at all in the car. So how will officers enforce the law? Well, frankly, it is. It's a, it's a very difficult law to enforce, and I think the best part of it is that it's a law that we can talk to the public, give some outreach, communication, information about the dangers of doing this, and that there is some teeth behind the law for the people that don't want to do this. Maryland is one of eight states and the District of Columbia to prohibit handheld phone use while driving. It is the only jurisdiction to enact the law as a secondary offense. Maryland law already prohibits a driver from writing or sending a text message while driving as a primary offense. Violators face up to $500 in fines. Still ahead on County Report this week, Montgomery County Public Schools take us on a tour of the environmentally friendly Carter Rock Springs Elementary School in Bethesda. Also ahead, some Montgomery College students lend a hand picking crops for the needy. We'll be right back. How would you like to save your life from an ugly, reckless driving death? Don't answer yet! There's more! Act now by slowing down, and we'll guarantee you complete satisfaction! That's awesome! In the real world, there is no spokesperson to prevent reckless driving. There's only you. Speak up. Whoa, Andy, slow down! It's one of the many ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org. Every child is curious. George, look what I found. Turn their curiosity into a lifelong love of learning. That's a periscope. It's one of the most important gifts you can share. Create a curious reader. Oh, you want to build a castle like that one? This is Super Bedtime Reading. Share a book together today. Visit read.gov. You promised me the world. Is this what you had in mind? Every choice we make has a consequence. Help Earthshare and its members restore balance to the world. Visit earthshare.org and see what you can do. Earthshare, one environment, one simple way to care for it. Welcome back to County Report this week. For much of the past decade, MCPS has been building environmentally friendly and energy efficient schools. It's a practice that saves county taxpayers money. Carter Rock Springs Elementary School in Bethesda is the most recent example of a school that is environmentally friendly. With rooftop solar panels and a geothermal heat exchange system, Carter Rock uses about 30% less electricity and water than the old building. A new school year provides everyone with the opportunity for growth, new relationships, and what's special about it this year is all of that will take place against the backdrop of our brand new school. 
The original building that was constructed in 1966 was demolished. The new replacement building on its same site will be approximately 67,000 square foot, more than doubling the original building. The outdoor space is absolutely amazing. Under the ground, there are approximately 120 bores that goes about 500 feet deep. That extracts the heat and cooling from the ground temperature and provides that uh, energy into the building. We also have photovoltaic system on the roof. We have eight other schools completed, and we're actually putting the electricity back onto the grid during the most peak demand time. No light switch needed. You open the door, the lights go on. We use the energy efficient lighting fixtures throughout the building along with daylighting. This building uses approximately 33% less electricity. We won't need to turn the lights on sunny days at all. This building will use approximately 38% less water by utilizing uh, low flow uh, plumbing fixtures in the restrooms as well as uh, native uh, drought resistant uh, landscaping on school grounds. The amphitheater is one of the unique features of the project. It is designed particularly into the hills and facing the northern exposure. It allows students and, and teachers to use that as an outdoor classroom. I think the school will help kids learn in a way because they'll get new capabilities. They have like new technology here, which they didn't have in the old school, so that helps like the learning. Uh, and the faculty get to teach in a brand new facility with new top flight technology and uh, overall I think it's just a win for the parents, the teachers uh, and the students of course. Carter Rock Springs Elementary School now serves as a living laboratory for students and the community as we develop new ways to become energy efficient. Gleaning is the act of collecting crops that have been left by farmers after being commercially harvested. In this week's piece from our friends at Montgomery College, we meet some students who volunteer their time to glean some cornfields to feed the hungry. During the past summer, Montgomery College students volunteered with Food Bank Bread for the City for an event known as Gleaning, in which corn was collected for the hungry. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. We're here with all our friends picking corn, so it's, it's pretty fun getting a tan, too. <laughs> This is the first time we've done Glean for this Bread for the City, and um, it's really a great cause. Um, we're feeding a lot and helping a lot of people right now. How cool is it that we get to um, feed like 1,500 people for like a couple weeks? So it's really awesome. It's a good opportunity to be involved with. Picking the corn left over from the farmers who didn't pick them, who missed them, good sized corn that is still edible and can be used. And we basically just pick them and put them in bins. We fill up the bins, and I'm pretty sure it's about 100 something bins, maybe more. And we just fill them up to the top, they put them in vans, they take them back, and, um, and the people who need them will share and gain something out of nothing that was that people left behind. The corn here, um, we will uh, bin it all up, we put it on the vans, um, and once it's on the vans, we go back to our food pantry. Clients and um, our, obviously our nutritionists love to have um, fresh corn instead of canned corn um, because canned corn, you know, you're, it's high in sugar, it's high in sodium, um, and it, once you can produce, it loses a lot of the nutrients. Any farmer that raises vegetables didn't raise them to throw away. They raised them to be eaten. So if we can have a group that comes in and picks up, goes through the field, picks what the harvesting crew perhaps has missed, or which may not be commercially viable, uh, but is still good to eat, then that makes me feel good. That's what we raise it for. It gets eaten. The group gleaned an estimated 3,000 pounds of corn, helping many people in need. Coming up, Brookside Gardens helps you make sure you've got the right tools for the job. And Kathy Stanhope will have our cut of the week. Keep it here on County Report This Week. I'm home and I love it. I'm home where I belong. I'm home and I love it. I'm home where I belong. It's always nice to come home. But these days, many Americans are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making Home Affordable is a free program from the U.S. government that has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these. And we want to help you. I'm home, I'm home, and I love it. 
that I'm home. I'm home. Find out now what your options are. Go to makinghomeaffordable.gov or call 1-888-995-HOPE. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home. I'm home. Where I belong. Since 1963, the Literacy Council of Montgomery County has provided free English tutoring to adults. More than 500 volunteer tutors are helping, but believe it or not, more are needed. Currently, there's a waiting list of 300 students. Volunteers meet with their students two hours a week at a time and library that's convenient, and tutors don't have to speak a foreign language to help. Won't you join us? For information, call 301-610-0030 or go to literacycouncilmcmd.org. Did you know that Montgomery County has nearly 250,000 residents over the age of 55? Join Austin Heyman, host of Seniors Today, for a monthly program that explores issues of interest to Montgomery County seniors. We look at county services and programs, but also discuss money, health, safety, volunteerism, learning opportunities, activities, and lots more. Seniors Today is your resource for vital living. Won't you join us? The Montgomery County Office of Human Rights investigates incidents of hate and violence as well as complaints of discrimination. Here's Montgomery College Television student reporter Sophia Reeves with a look at how this office fosters equal opportunity for all residents. Let's start with an overview of the Office of Human Rights. We have the Compliance Division, which deals with the investigative mode. The, it is the Enforcement Division that would enforce the Chapter 27, Article 1 of the County Code. Um, under that, we do investigate uh, complaints of discrimination pertaining to employment discrimination, housing discrimination, public accommodation discrimination. Additionally, we have Fair Housing, which is doing community outreach. Now let's head over to the Humane Society where Kathy Stanhope has our Pet of the Week. Hi, I'm Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. And this lovely guy here is Solo. He's about a three-year-old boxer mix. And he is just a charming dog. He's very excited to be out of his cage right now. But he was found as a stray. And the really nice thing about Solo is he walks so beautifully on the leash. He's very calm and reserved most of the time. He gets along well with other dogs. In fact, he mostly ignores other dogs, which is kind of nice. If you want to take him for a walk, you don't have to worry about him pulling you on the leash. And he likes to play ball, and he likes to play with you. He's just a really nice guy. Like I said, he was found as a stray. He's not quite sure why he's here in a cage. He wants to go home with somebody. So if you're looking for a boxer mix or a nice, big, friendly guy like Solo here, come visit him at the Montgomery County Humane Society or call us at 240-773-5960 or visit us on the web at mchumane.org. Come see Solo or another dog like him. The Montgomery County Humane Society is having a fall patio party to benefit shelter animals on Tuesday, September 14th, 5.30 to 8.30 at the Redwood Restaurant and Bar on Bethesda Row. Go to the Humane Society website at mchumane.org and go to events for further information. Now we head over to Brookside Gardens, where Jim DeRamus gives us a lesson on how to use those gardening tools that might be gathering dust in your garage. Having the right tool makes any job easier, whether you're a seasoned professional gardener or just a beginner. These are some of the tools I use every day. Uh, a watering wand to help break up the force of the water, a pole pruner to reach those high limbs that may have broken, a leaf rake, a folding saw, and be careful, these are very sharp, but they're wonderful. And of course, an 8-inch mill bastard file to keep everything sharp. A simple trowel will come in handy every day. And we have two weeding tools here, one for scraping seedlings off and the other for digging deeper. And two different shovels, a round nose for just general digging and a spade for cutting edges in the garden bed. Happy gardening! That does it for County Report this week. Join us at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching.